Seeking Arrangement is a sugar dating site that describes itself as creating relationships on your terms, which the website conveniently does not explicitly define, placing themselves in a gray area facilitating online commercial sexual exploitation. New anti-aging supplements and serums come out all the time. We're constantly bombarded with them on TV, Facebook, and on store shelves. The problem with 99% of them is that they never work, but they keep getting released anyway. This is why I highly recommend Glow with Natalie. Glow with Natalie is the best anti-aging serum on the market today. Thousands of satisfied users report softer, clearer, smoother looking skin and disappearing age spots. Their skin looks and feels tight in weeks, not months. If you want to try this miraculous plant extract yourself, go to glowwithnatalie.com to get the Ageless Glow for 38% off today or click the link in the video description below. Muchachos y muchachas, yesterday... I reported about Matt Gates, and the details that were available at that time were very vague. They were very anonymous, and they came from a media outlet that we haven't been able to rely on very consistently. And, you know, although if I were to put myself in my shoes at that time frame, I would still probably make the same assumptions and observations and comments. I cannot say that that is the same today. There have been a lot of details that have unraveled uh, through the Matt Gates. Uh, I don't know what we call it, Matt Gate, Matt Gates Gate. Like this, this whole situation, this whole saga. There's a lot of new information that has surfaced, and let me tell you, it's salacious, less vicious, it's scandalous, and we got to go through it. Let's do it. So the last that I talked to you, you know, he was, it was announced that he was under a sex trafficking probe by uh, the federal government. It was a federal investigation. Um, what I am also learning, but backing up, the investigation was started by William Barr. William Barr was under the Trump administration. This happened towards the tail end of his term of Trump's term. And so all of this just became really, really interesting, really fast as, you know, a lot more witness accounts are coming forward. So uh, let's go in. Let's jump right in. All right. So we'll start with this. So it is also unveiled that Matt Gates was eyeing an early retirement to take a job at Newsmax. And I'm just going to fast forward here where it says what we're hearing. Gates has told some of his allies he's interested in becoming a media personality and floated taking a role at Newsmax. One of the sources said Gates hasn't had an early uh, conversation with the network about what a position would look like. And which is. It's curious because Matt Gates, I think at one point, was seeking a higher position in in politics. I think he was looking for like a Senate position, Senate seat or something like that. So that's that's that is very curious. And he's he's young. He's 38 years old. So, you know, an early retirement is questionable. I didn't think much of it. Then as we progressed into 24 hours and literally it is midnight right now that I'm filming this and detail, I was still seeing details roll out about this. So things are just outpouring by the second, by the minute. Daily Beast obtained the text messages that pointed the feds to Matt Gates. So apparently um, there was a conversation with what we um go watch my first video you know it's it's good to transcend through this but the new york times associated matt gates with joel greenberg which was a, a federal he was a federal tax collector and um he abused his power multiple times and we're going to go through that too we're going to get into the characteristics of this man and you know they associated matt gates with him he 
I believe is right now he's indicted for sex trafficking minors. Um, I believe the ages of these girls were like 14 through 17 years old. And this guy who is a tax collector, he actually had a connection or he had a way to make fake IDs, which is, I mean, so, so dirty. So in late January 2020, U.S. Secret Service agents received information that rep Representative Matt Gates had accompanied a Florida County tax official. They were already investigating on an unusual nighttime visit into a government office where the local official was allegedly making fake IDs. A source close to the investigation told the Daily Beast. So that tip came to the feds in a text message conversation that Seminole County tax collector Joel Greenberg had with an employee explaining why they were both in the office one weekend two years earlier, according to the person. So I'm going to fast forward to these text messages here. And uh, this is image, but uh, allegedly responded. Um Oh, oh, oh. So this was a this was a branch manager that text messaged Joel Greenberg, who is the tax collector. And the reason why she text messaged him, because there were um, the, the licenses, I guess there was like here. Let me just read this part so that way I don't have to paraphrase. According to three people with direct knowledge of the incident, Greenberg visited the Lake Mary, Florida branch of his tax collection agency that weekend. Grading surveillance footage captured Greenberg standing near a manager's desk with a, another man. Greenberg forgot to set the alarm on the way out, which concerned the assistant branch man manager when she walked into the office Monday, concerned the assistant branch manager when she walked into the office Monday morning. That employee was surprised to find that driver's licenses, which are normally turned in when expired at the tax office for shredding, were scattered all over the desk instead of the appropriate disposal basket. She reviewed all over, excuse me, she reviewed the camera footage and alerted her boss, who in turn contacted Bring Greenberg via text. And this was the text. So... There were the tax office, just so you understand the scene. Joel Greenberg was the tax collector for an a tax collecting agency. The branch manager of that agent of his agency came into the office one day and there were driver's licenses scattered all over the desk. So she text messages him and she goes, did you happen to visit the Lake Mary office on the weekend? Over the weekend. And uh, he says, yes, I was showing Congressman Gates what our operation looked like. Did I leave something on? And uh, and this this was a text message to that uh, branch manager from Joel. Amy, is there any way to assist one of our congressmen in getting an emergency replacement ID or driver's license by Tuesday, 2 p.m.? His was lost to yesterday and he's got a flight Tuesday. Does doesn't have any other form of ID currently on him. Sorry to bother you on a Sunday. And the the text message here comes off and she asks um who is it? What's his date of birth? And then here it confirms in this text message, Congressman, Congressman Matt Gates, his birth date, and that's his full name, Matthew Louise Gates II. So, you know, the, these are these are the actual text messages. And that's what took me really back. I was like, well, you know, I know it's the Daily Beast and we don't trust we don't trust these mainstream media outlets. But when someone has receipts like that, then you've got to look a little closer. So then the rabbit hole continues. So that is what prompted the, fed uh, the federal agents to probe that investigation into this incident. So... Moving forward, who is Joel Greenberg? So that is a tax collector. And I wanted to really dive into his character and why, yeah, this, this should be concerning. And mind you, 
a lot of these details that are coming out about Matt Gates being that close to Joel Bringer, Greenberg, like initially the the New York Times, they reported it as if like, you know, he was he was endorsed by Greenberg and, you know, they were close, but it didn't detail like how close they were. And now these details are coming out. So I'm going to uh, let's get to know Greenberg a little bit closer. Former Seminole tax collector Joel Greenberg faces sex trafficking charges. Joel Greenberg is facing sex trafficking. And this was written. Oh, this was this was last year, uh, August 20, uh, 21st, 2020. <clears throat> Joel Greenberg is facing sex trafficking charges related to a girl between the ages of 14 and 17 and is also accused of illegally using a state database to look up information about the girl and other people with whom he was engaged in sugar daddy relationships according to an indictment filed Friday by the U.S. Attorney's Office. The document, which alleges six new counts against Greenberg, in addition to six counts of the two previous federal grand jury indictments, doesn't offer specifics about sex trafficking charge, except that the alleged crime occurred in 2017. So he utilized a federal database to gain access to this girl's information. And um, him being a federal, um, a, a fed, like an elected official, uh, he has a certain clearance of, of data access. So he also used this data access clearance to uh, look up other people. Um, and uh, these were other relationships that he was in a sugar daddy relationship with. Oh, let me fix this. I don't know why it cut off my my text. My apologies. There we go. There we go. Sorry about that. Greenberg used data, uh, the, the database to look up information that was prohibited, including to produce a false identification document and to facilitate his efforts to engage in commercial sex acts. Um. And this isn't the first time that he's done that, right? So this is already discuss disgusting enough that he would utilize his power to leverage over girls. And I'm going to go into a little bit more of that, uh, utilizing a, a website. So it's called... What is it called? It's called something to the fact of what is it called? Seeking arrangements. And um, I'm going to go into those details, too. But apparently this this is like, a you know, the, the whole idea is that it's sugar daddies looking for sugar babies, which are obviously younger, uh, younger. They should they should be younger, young women. But um, there there are a lot of allegations surrounding that website in itself. We'll go into that, too. So anyway, back to Joel Br Greenberg. He has been known to leverage his, and abuse his power as an elected official. So here it says uh, that he is he's actually facing 14 federal charges, including allegations. He stalked a political opponent, excuse me, opponent. Illegally use the state database to create fake IDs and sex traffic to minor. And these are some other ways that he's abused his elected official power. In 2019, the Orlando Sentinel investigation revealed Greenberg had spent $3.5 million in consultant contract salaries to friends and associates, including giving a combined $644,000 to three of his groomsmen and another $677,000 to a campaign advisor. An audit released last December showed Greenberg wasted about $1 million in taxpayer funds including buying body armor, weapons, ammunition, and a drone. So this guy was just reckless. He didn't care. He was just abusing his power left and right. So that is Joel Greenberg. And then this is where some, this is where the dicey details are. Not as if that's not dicey enough, right? Like as if that association with that man is di not dicey enough. This is what this is what also got me sucked in a little bit more because now we've got 
more receipts. We've got more pictures surfacing from the past, things that we, um, you know, that that should make us question this. Question it in a in a way that, hey, this is a real probe and this is a real concern. So exclusive. This is from the Daily Mail. His friend has been singing to the feds. That's why Matt is so freaked out. Gates arrest is imminent as jailed tax collector Joel Greenberg faces charges of having sex with the same 17 year old and making fake IDs with a congressman. And it says here Greenberg, who has. Oh, who was elected um, an elected Seminole County tax collector in 2016 is currently in jail awaiting trial after being slapped with a string of charges last year, including sex trafficking a minor between 14 and 17. Um, we all know about the whole scandal and the pushback by Matt Gates. He's saying it's, it's an extortion scheme. However, these are the details that are starting to unravel from his uh, by his or about his friend ratting him out this is what the source had to say the congressman impugned and damaged by the reputation of someone who had nothing to do with this the source told dailymail.com gates is a sleazebag who used a professional with a sterling reputation to divert the attention of a sex investigation focused on him Rest assured that Greenberg has been singing to the feds about his friend, Matt Gates. That's why Matt is so freaked out, the source added. Gates' arrest is set to be imminent after the alleged victim, who has not been named, testified before a Florida grand jury is, uh, this week saying that she had sex with the conservative Republican before she turned 18. Wow. Okay. So there was a testimony. This this piece of information is huge because this this one piece of information uh, that was provided by the uh, New York Times was very vague. It was just, you know, they're looking to see whether or not he did this, whether or not he had sex with the 17 year old. But now I'm just pointing this out. Now we're learning that this girl or this woman now um is test had had testified but but for a grand jury this week saying she had sex with the conservative republican which is gates wow i mean this is just mind-blowing information so here it is The investigation into Gates first spiraled from a probe into Greenberg, who was indicted last summer on 14 felony charges, including child sex trafficking, fraud, identity theft, stalking a former political rival. Gates caught the attention of the investigations in January of 2020 after they learned he had accompanied Greenberg on a late night visit to the Florida tax agency in 2018. And uh, those are the text messages I had just uh, shown you. And uh, it it does go into more detail about, you know, uh, him being seen on the footage and the text messages. Footage of the 2018 visit to the office has not been publicly released. As officials said, security videos are only stored for 60 days per agency policy. Uh, Yeah, so so I'm going to assume that they're talking about the tax agency. Gates was reportedly first introduced to the women through Greenberg, who investigators believe met the women through sugar daddy websites, including seeking arrangements where rich men pay women and gifts, travel, fine dining and allowances in exchange for going on dates with them. Receipts from the mobile payments app, Cash App and Apple Pay show both Gates and Greenberg sent payments to the one woman and Greenberg sent a payment to a second woman, the Times reported. So this is where I'm going to take you into detail with the uh, seeking arrangements. The website for finding sugar babies that Matt Gates allegedly met women through was founded by an MIT, which that part, you know, it, I, I get it. Like the, it, this person's probably a sleazeball, the, the owner, but I, I want to get to the nitty gritty details about Matt Gates. Now, I, what I will say, though, and I'll, I'll go in after this, what I will say is this this entire thing needs to be probed for sex trafficking, even through seeking arrangements. I'm going to go into some very specific detail why. 
Seeking Arrangement, a website designed to connect so-called sugar babies and sugar daddies, is making headlines for its reported role in the investigation into allegations that Representative Matt Gates paid women for sex and that may that may have broken sex trafficking laws. A Justice Department investigation is currently active in looking into whether Gates, a Republican from Florida and associates, paid women for sex, according to the New York Times. Gates and his associates reportedly met women from Seeking Arrangement, a popular site for women looking to receive gifts and make money by going on dates, developing relationships with wealthy men, the Times reported that FBI mentioned the website in the conversation at least one by one potential witness. Gates has denied ever paying for sex or using seeking arrangement or similar sites. Seeking arrangement did not immediately respond to request uh, to a com- request for comment. So then it goes into it goes into the owner of seeking arrangement. And I would have to agree. I, we want to learn more about him. He's a sleazeball. Um, this diverts away from this story, but you know it does talk about how much of a sleazeball he is. And we're going to actually go into some of that detail here. Um, so this is this is a, an account of seeking arrangement that this is actually this needs to be probed because it's being said that this could possibly be a sex trafficking scheme um that there have been many questionable um things that have come out of that like uh, a lot of shysty situations from the sugar daddies so let's see this account here this is from nsexualexploitation.org Seeking Arrangement is a sugar dating site that describes itself as creating relationships on your terms, which the website conveniently does not explicitly define, placing themselves in a gray area facilitating online commercial sexual exploitation. Sugar dating is marketed at relationships which young, attractive women can meet experienced men who will provide everything from mentorship to all expenses paid lavish vacations in this system men are encouraged to engage in no strings attached relationships with beautiful young women meanwhile sugar babies are told that this experience will empower them and benefit them both financially and experience experientially in most cases sugar dating is just another term for prostitution so i'm just gonna stay i'm just gonna pause and say this look For anybody getting themselves in a situation of being a sugar baby or obtaining a sugar daddy, um, I don't know how you wouldn't expect that this would not include some sort of sexual favors or, um, you know, an expectation by by the sh- the sugar daddy. I, I just. I don't know. I mean, I, I maybe there are sugar daddies out there that just they just want to spend money. I don't know. But I'm just saying, like, it sort of it sort of feels like that comes with the territory. So, you know, th- I guess I say that because that's just a warning out there. Like if there's any young people that think that this is just like a la la land dream, like that's not reality. There's a lot of gross rich men out there that just want to take advantage of young women that are naive. So this is the account here. The men, the sugar daddies who feed the demand for sugar dating are there to gratify their own sexual entitlement. One young woman who signed up if we're seeking arrangement described being pressured into sexual activity. It's not just a 55 year old guys with a bit of cash. They want to spend on spoiling a 20 year old. That's the pipe dream. They sell you. It's a lot of men with really strange that this is the part. It's a lot of men with really strange and dark fantasies. You get the idea that it's not really sexual and that's the image portrayed by in the media. When I went on it, I thought I wouldn't really have to do a lot. I didn't realize the level that was expected. I thought at worst I would have to send some photographs and do some webcamming. I didn't know how explicit it was going to be and just how awful it is. It's a load of men with really obscure fantasies and fetishes. A lot of it is 
inflicting sadistic stuff on girls and students who are vulnerable. It's all pretty extreme. Through me being on there, I was recruited into the sex industry. Just because we're adults, it doesn't mean we're not vulnerable. Men still prey on you. The predators and the pimps, they prey on 18 to 25 year olds that they know are financially desperate. And um, it does go into some uh, some statistics about the increase of demand on on uh, sugar babies. Look, this is why I say and, I, and a lot of people, this is a very unpopular opinion. And it's crazy that it's unpopular, but I'm just going to say it because I, I need to say it. The the this whole sex work industry that people try to advocate for is not what it seems to be like. It's it's not it's not what it's sold to be. It is a depraved industry. And, you know, the reason why I speak out on it is because I see a lot of sex trafficking stories and, you know, these these girls, they think that they're getting this life. They think that they're, you know, they're going to have this lavish lifestyle and may, that may be so for a little bit. But, you know, the, this this just needs to be said, like th it is a depraved world. It is not just like a, you know, a cash cow. It could be, you know, for very rare instances. But it's like this is this comes with a lot of dark things. So getting on websites like seekingarrangements.com, the very name should tell you in itself that it's something a lot more than just dating. Um, and you're not calling it's not calling for a very um, fruit bearing life. It's it's depraved. It's dependent. And, you know, this is why I, I, I speak out on it and it's not popular, but, you know, this is what has gotten us to this depraved society is by like just being so openly uh, promiscuous and, you know, being so openly accepting of, you know, weird, weird sexualities and sexual fetishes. It's just like, no, <laughs> you know, at one point we've got to say, no, like we need to just get back to normalcy and like stop pretending like this is normal stuff. Just a little rant there. Okay, let's go back. So he sought women, apparently he sought women on seeking arrangements and it is that the cash the tracing the money is where the feds probed more so here it is so i mentioned before that there were receipts for cash payments on the cash app and um you know other receipts and people speaking out about it investigators believe joel greenberg a former tax collector in the seminole county florida who was indicted last year we know that initially met women through websites that connect people who go on dates in exchange for gifts, fine dining, travel, and allowances, according to three people with knowledge of the encounters. Mr. Greenberg introduced the women to Mr. Gates, who also had sex with them, the people said. That's where it is right there. If this is true, that's the detail right there. If this is all true, that's the detail right there. And that's why Matt Gates, you know, that's and, and this is why I cross reference articles, because that's why Matt Gates, the Daily Mail article, that's why he's freaking out, because if this is true, Joel Greenberg is singing and he's talking about the girls that he recruited that were between 14 and 17 years old, that they weren't just for Joel Greenberg. They were also for Matt Gates. If this is true, I'm not saying it is. I'm just saying if this is true, that's why Matt Gates is speaking out. One of the women who had sex with both men also agreed to have sex with an unidentified associate of theirs in Florida Republican politics. According to a person familiar with the arrangement, Mr. Greenberg had initially contacted her online, introduced her to Mr. Gates, and the person said Mr. Gates denied ever paying for the woman for sex. So that's where it's at right there. So this is the part that just like I was like, OK, OK, this is where it's real, because let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. A lot of people, they suspected that William Barr was a bad person, like he was 
completely useless, that he did nothing. But I am one of the few people or one of the crazies out there that believe that he just kept his he kept his game tight and he kept his game unleaked. And I think that he did a lot more than we can ever see with our public eye. And we can't see it yet. If if yet. There. I believe will be a lot more unveiled about the role that William Barr paid, played because look, let me, let me just say this. He made a big move that made me look, he made a huge move that made me look and it completely, it just, it just burned in my memory. I'm like, no bad person would do that. I, or if somebody meant for the ill of this entire scheme of things or uh, unveiling the truth, nobody would do that. And that was when he he got rid of the Southern District of the New, New York Attorney General. Um, I forget his first name, but the last name I think is Brayman. And he replaced him. This, this district has jurisdiction over the Epstein documents over the Anthony Weiner laptop, the Hillary Clinton emails, and I want I want to also say that he they also have jurisdiction over the Peter Nygaard because right now he's awaiting extradition in Canada for the Southern District of New York. So, look, I know we're we're sitting here in time April April third. Well, it's after I just hit after midnight. It's April 3rd. We still don't have a mass arrest. We don't have all these things and, you know, uh, these corrupt politicians going to jail. But the thing is, we we still don't know everything, though. We don't know what could in, unfold. And that, to me, is a big detail that people overlook. They tend to overlook that. So I just want to prime you guys on my opinion on William Barr. I don't think he's a bad dude. I really don't. I think that he did things so close-lipped and underwrapped. I think he did a good job. And I think there are things that we don't know yet that will probably come out in the future about him and what he did. And that will vindicate his silence and his the image of him not doing anything. But I, I truly don't think that. So the Southern District of New York is a big, huge move that I think people really underestimate that. And to reaffirm my point, right after he did that, when he fired the prior, the prior Southern District of New York attorney, that's when Glenn Maxwell was arrested. So, you know, call that a coincidence. I don't think so. I think it was, I mean, it had to be directly co connected. But even till this day, she has she's still she's still awaiting trial. She's just been charged for uh, sex trafficking a 14 year old. Things are just intensifying if you have the eyes to see it. So let's get back to William Barr. So William Barr is the one who opened up this investigation. William Barr opened up this investigation under the Trump era administration so this is a huge indicator to me huge indicator that things are still in motion and we just can't see it bill barr avoided matt gates in public while the doj was conducting its sex trafficking investigation So he opened up the investigation. The investigation into Gates began last year near the end of President Donald Trump's term. While Barr was serving as U.S. Attorney General, the Times reported Barr and other senior Trump appointees at the DOJ were also aware of the investigation at the time political reported. As this was going on, Barr went to lengths to avoid being seen with Gates in public, Politico reported, citing an unnamed person with the knowledge of the investigation. On one occasion, Politico reported the Justice Department even pulled Barr out of a social meeting with the Republican Party members of the House Judiciary Committee when he saw that Gates was also attending. The DOJ declined to comment. So 
This is a lot of information, right? So this is this is all unraveling. All of this came out today and I was like, I've got to say all of it. I've got to say all of it. We've got to keep this going. We've got to keep this transcending. And for for whatever reasons, if this is just meant to document the situation, I've got to invite we've got to go through all of it. So this gets into the nitty gritty about Matt Gates and his pal. Joel Greenberg. Matt Gates boasted that Powell charged with sex trafficking was his wingman report claims. The polls told that the uh, told the paper that Gates played the videos them videos of naked topless women on several occasions including at parties with Greenberg. The ex-tax collector of Seminole County, the paper said, the new report was just the latest eruption of disturbing list vicious news Concerning Gates, who since Tuesday has been linked on a purported orgy and $25 million extortion plot, as well as being exposed as under federal investigation for allegedly sex trafficking a girl under the age of 17. So. So this is where the details start to unravel. The women on Gates phone appear to be adults and. um they were obviously they were nude as it said it says it was greenberg's prosecution for allegedly making fake ids for a minor girl to facilitate his efforts to engage in commercial sex acts that had first put gates on the feds radar matt was never a shy guy about talking about this relationship to joel and the access to women that joel provided him one anonymous source told the washington post another less than flattering portrayal of gates and greenberg's friendship emerged earlier friday that text obtained by the daily beast appeared to show the two collaborating in september to get some time type of ids outside of the proper channels though it is unstated why um also to that I'm not sure that I mentioned this part. This is a voicemail. This is the voicemail. This is a voicemail from um, about that that scene. In relation to that scene, this is Joel Greenberg calling the branch manager that was in that text message, and Matt Gates is heard in the background. My dear Anna, this is your favorite tax collector. I'm up in the fan. Who was your favorite U.S. Congressman, Mr. Gates? Hi, Anna. And uh, we were just chatting about you and talking about your lovely qualities. And your... We think you're the future of the Democratic Party in Florida. Well, see, I know you're the future of it, so there's no thinking involved. Anyway, uh, if you get this and you feel like chatting, give me a shout back. Hope you're well. Hope you had a nice fourth. Later. All right. Okay. Now the details get even grittier. So we heard that he showed nude photos to fellow staffers. Matt Gates, who is a subject of a sex trafficking probe, allegedly bragged about his sexual prowess by showing lawmakers images of nude women he claimed to have slept with, according to a report. Multiple sources, including two women who reportedly viewed the material. And see, this is the part. These are the little parts of these these articles where I'm like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. Now, the reason why I am definitely reporting this is because it is cross-referenced from several sources that are um, different biases. So when that happens, then that means that there are there's a lot of information coming from different angles. And it when it lines up and it parallels and it corroborates, then you got you got to start looking at it that way. So although this says CNN, and I kind of have to stink guy CNN right there, um, I'm just gonna read it out loud uh, multiple sources including two told cnn that the embattled republican displayed the images of women on his phone and talked about having sex with them one of the uh, on the video showed a nude woman with a hula hoop one source told the network it was a point of pride gates has denied the allegations in the strongest possible terms so then this moves us into a sex game or a points game that Matt Gates would allegedly play with his fellow colleagues. 
and this is what it states. Matt Gates, Florida sex game, included a Harry Potter challenge and extra points for sleeping in sorority houses and female Republican tells an insider. Sleeping with married legislators, spending the night at a college sorority house. These were specific ways how U.S. Representative Matt Gates and other Florida lawmakers would earn extra points in a sex competition in which Gates is accused of participating when he served the state's House of Representatives, a female GOP insider who worked with Gates in the 2010s, told Insider in an interview. The sex competition even involved Harry Potter, the book series. The GOP source told Insider, anyone who had sex with a certain conservative woman won the whole game regardless of points. She said that woman was known as the snitch, a nod to Harry Potter in, in the game of Quidditch. The GOP source said that he heard specific references of Gates being involved in scoring points. She declined the name of the woman to protect her privacy. Her accusations about Gates participating in participation in the sex competition built upon others. Chris Lutbala, a Republican state representative who overlapped with Gates in the Florida House, accused Gates in 2020, a 2020 tweet of creating a game where members of the Florida House got points for sleeping with late aides, interns, lobbyists, and married legislators. Another way to obtain points was to have sex with virgins, ABC reported this week, citing a source. <sighs> This the existence of this game among male lawmakers was the worst kept secret in Tallahassee. The GOP insider said lawmakers who participated publicly bragged about it. Even among their female colleagues, some male legislators who didn't participate jokingly lamented the fact that they abstained. So here is the line of. Tweets detailing this and this was back in January here we go so this is Chris Latvala this was a fellow I believe a fellow Republican um, overlap with Matt Gates. it was an honor to meet the Rev uh, Rev AI today Al Sharpton and then uh, Matt Gates responded, Sharpton has called cops pigs, whites interloppers, Greeks homos, and Jewish people diamond merchants. So that is pretty disgusting. Um, that is what Matt Gates said. And then Chris Latvala responded back, and you created a game where members of the Florida House got points for sleeping with aides, interns, lobbyists, and married legislators. Hope DC is treating you well. Congressman, and this was January 14th, 2020, when he made that response to Matt Gates. Mark Caputo, he then tweeted out, Hey, lady, source, young male Florida Republicans have a point system contest for having sex. One equals lobbyists, two equals staff, three equals other legislator, and six equals Mary legislator. Here's the continued um, text message. I'm sorry, uh, tweet. Matt responded to that and said, just because I won you on Twitter, don't confuse me with your daddy when it comes to abusing power for sex. Also, I missed the defense of Sharpton in your reply, which now that I look at that, looks like a deflection. Then Chris Lavala, he responded, have you been drinking tonight? I hope you don't get behind the wheel. I know you have had a rough few days up there. In which Matt Gates responded, I spent my day talking to my friend and supporter, the president. You spent yours with Al Sharpton. And he responded, yep, I'm not af I'm not afraid to meet with folks with differing opinions than mine. Hence why I posted the picture on Twitter, which I will say is rather it's different. It's different. So today it's it's admirable is what I wanted to say. Although I don't think Al Sharpton is admirable at all. So today, it brings me to this. Matt Gates, communication director, quit amid the investigation. Very short blip. It says... The, uh, they made a statement. The office congressman, Matt Gates and Luke Ball, have agreed that it would be best to part ways. We thank him for his time in our office and we wish him the best moving forward. Ball resigned from his position out of principle 
As NBC reported, Ball did not immediately respond to the Washington Examiner's request for comment. Ball worked in Gates' congressional office starting in 2018, starting as a scheduler and then serving as a press assistant to the director of communications. In November of 2020, he started a digital production company called Right Life Media. So I know that this was a very long winded video. Um, I definitely didn't. I didn't plan to go this long. Usually my videos are much shorter, but this has to be set. Like all of these details came out today, all of these details. And I was like, even up to midnight, I was like, I have got to get everything in here. I've got to, because I have a feeling that a lot of things are going to tumble really fast. And so as these details come out, it's important to document and reference the transcendence of all of this. So I have a term for myself and for my followers on Instagram. They, some, of, some of them know what this is. It's called my wig is snatched. And uh, it's a term <laughs> It's a term that, that kind of alludes to, you know, um, when something surprises me or like, I'm I'm my like it's kind of like your jaw dropping on the floor like you're awestruck I say this just snatched my wig and this story just snatched my wig I am I am kind of I'm astounded because I believe this is an unexpected angle to come from but I believe if justice is if if he did this and justice actually actually prevails through a Republican, which is unexpected. I think that the public eye will be adjusted to seeing justice administered to those that would commit this horrific crime of sex trafficking. So I think once the public eye adjusts to this, and this is a Trump administration era, era investigation probe i think it's an interesting get angle but it's an adjustment for the public eye i believe that although it's unfavorable because we've seen a lot of heinous allegations about certain other par other party members that we'd like to see come to justice but i think this has to be the start in order for the public eye to readjust their their viewing and readjust their eye set so once they see justice prevail on this, if there are other things that would need justice prevailed over, I think that they would be adjusted to receive that. I don't know if that makes any sense. Okay, so I know that's a lot of information. I know that's a lot of information, but guys, this is a lot of information and I feel like this needs to be all talked about in this segment. So it's after midnight coming close to one o'clock in the morning. Um, and I, all this information came out today, had to dish it out. I have a feeling that more is going to come out. So supporting you are transcendent through it. All right. Thank you for supporting me. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for watching this video and learning all these details with me. What do you think? Is this what you thought? Is this what you thought would happen? I mean, this is a lot of corroborative details. And, you know, I I got to report what's fair. And um, it, this is pretty bananas. So let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for all of your attention. Thank you for um, watching this video, liking, subscribing. I will catch you guys in the next video.